Advaitic intelligence and AI. <laughs> but it's not as uh, silly as it sounds because there's a, um, a weird connection. Somebody told me, the person behind uh, OpenAI, uh, Sam Altman, somebody asked, it seems somebody asked Sam Altman, tell us something that you believe in which we don't know. And he said, Atman is Brahman. Yeah, it's it's apparently it's on his uh, X feed or something like that. Um, anyway, that's what I heard. So there is actually a, this connection. It seems he's very interested in Vedanta. Yeah. Um, now, can artificial intelligence become conscious? It's it's a big question, and there's many sides to it. First of all, um, let's just note that the companies, organizations developing and using artificial intelligence right now and in the foreseeable future have really no interest in making AI conscious. They want AI for the things it can do for them. And that it can do very well without being conscious. Uh, you know, you can, you're using it for data analysis, you're using it uh, for, uh, um, you know, enhancing your search engines. It doesn't need to be conscious to do all that. You're using it for writing an essay, you're using it for composing a poem. Uh, it can do it without, as it is, without being conscious at all. However, it's an interesting question. Can it be conscious? And you know, the reason why we are asking this question is, it seems to imitate human uh, intelligence so well. That's why it's called artificial intelligence. And that's very close to consciousness. That's where the curiosity arises. So I am intelligent, hopefully, and the AI is intelligent. I am conscious. Is AI conscious? That question comes up in our mind. Right now, no, it isn't. How do you know? Because ask the experts, not me, just ask the experts. They will all say, yeah, I don't, we don't think that AI is um, conscious. And anyway, in ca any case, we have never um, programmed it for uh, consciousness. Uh, so whatever they have done, they have not obviously programmed it for consciousness. And not only that, they would say that we don't know where to begin. If you ask us to program it for consciousness, we have no idea to how to make anything conscious. Okay, from a Vedantic perspective, you said some Japanese uh, researchers have a different idea of consciousness, which is body-related. Uh, it's not different. It's it's the basic idea of consciousness which we all have. Whether we are consciousness studies people or just the lay person or us, we have to study, we have to start the study of consciousness with the body-related consciousness. But that's where we experience consciousness first. When you talk about Vedanta and all that, most people will um, will say, look, I understand the consciousness which is part of body and mind. I am conscious. Yes, who will deny that they are conscious? Not conscious. Um, who will deny that they are conscious? Everybody knows that they are conscious. But what most of, almost all of us will say, I am conscious and there is a mind and there is a body. Body, mind, consciousness together, this we understand. So we have to start there. Pure consciousness, they will say, this is something uh, strange. I, we don't understand this. We don't even know what you're talking about. Now this um, uh, empirical consciousness or the consciousness which you find in our day-to-day -day activities can AI have that? When the question is asked, can AI be conscious, they actually mean the kind of consciousness uh, which we are using right now. You know, you are talking, you are listening, um, reading, enjoying, suffering. This is consciousness. Uh, sensory consciousness, judgmental consciousness, memory level, um, desires and all of that. So this one, is it possible for AI to have? From a Vedantic perspective, the answer is, uh, first answer would be no. But then they would be a considered yes, in the, possibly in the future, in principle. Why no? Why no? Because the Vedantic perspective is that the consciousness which we have right now um, is the consciousness found in the subtle body. Unless you can design a subtle body, there won't be consciousness there. You can um, So AI right now uh, is that intelligence which you find in AI is not really a human intelligence. It's a good imitation of human intelligence, but the processes going on in that AI, in the computer, in the algorithms, is very different from the biological processes going on in the mind. Yeah. There may be some distant mapping, but actually the processes are quite different. Um, Vedanta says consciousness is everywhere, in the sense of Brahman. But you need a reflector, a medium which will catch that consciousness and make it uh, transactional. Such a reflector is our subtle body, our minds. Somebody asked me a few days ago, one question I can't understand uh, is that, um, I don't understand the answer to that. 
is that if consciousness is everywhere, then it should be there in a dead body. Then what is it that has left the bo dead body? Brahman is everywhere and Brahman is consciousness. It should be there in this table and chair. And if a person dies, the dead body should also have consciousness. Yes. So Brahman is everywhere and the dead body also. Brahman is there also. As existence itself. The, after all, the dead body does exist. So the existence there is, is borrowed from Brahman. But the consciousness there is not evident because the subtle body has left it. That's the definition of death in Vedanta. If the subtle body leaves the physical body, that's called death. In Vedanta, in, I think most Indian religions would put it that way. You know, we say in Hindi, what chale gaye. What chale gaye means the one has left uh, death. What kya chala gaye? What left? Uh, it's a subtle body which has left. The subtle body catches uh, the reflection of uh, consciousness and that's what we feel as this empirical consciousness. When you see the Japanese researchers are uh, talking about consciousness related to the body, Vedanta would say, yes, they're talking about the consciousness which they are experiencing, which is the reflected consciousness which is experienced in the mind. Uh, unless you can design such a subtle body, unless you can design such a mind, there won't be uh, reflected consciousness and there won't be the kind of consciousness people are interested in. AI will not become conscious. This is the answer. The, all this is explanation of no, why AI cannot become conscious according to Vedanta. Now I said considered, yes, in principle it is possible. Why? A person might ask, all right, wait a minute. This subtle body, what's it made of? So suppose I have to make a subtle body in order to reflect consciousness. Now what's it made of? According to Vedanta, even the subtle body is made of matter. Physical body is made of matter, subtle body is made of matter. A sukshma, uh, a subtle matter. We call it sukshma tanmatras. Tanmatras are um, uh, sukshma panchabhuta. Tanmat uh, sukshma panchabhuta means the subtle forms of the five elements of earth, space, water, air and so on. That's the ancient cosmology. But the pr point to be taken from here is that um, subtle bodies are also matter. If subtle bodies are matter, if physical body is matter, then um, a scientist working with matter one day might be able to understand how a subtle body is made and how it functions and might be able to make a, an artificial subtle body. Now, if consciousness is everywhere, that artificial subtle body should be able to reflect consciousness in, by your own Vedantic logic. And I have to say, yes, in principle, it might be possible sometime in the future, but it would require drastic improvements in uh, um, in uh, changes in physics, for example.